This is lesson 3.3, page 122. This lesson is called Function Notation. In this lesson, you will learn how to use function notation to evaluate and interpret functions. You will learn how to use function notation to solve and graph functions. And you will learn how to solve real life problems using function notation. Let's talk about using function notation to evaluate and interpret first. You know that a linear function can be written in this form. We've already learned about that form earlier in chapter 3. By naming a linear function f, you can also write the function using what's called function notation. So this is just an equation, but it's not in function notation. However, if I rewrite this statement in that form, that is called function notation. Now let's analyze these two carefully. Do you notice these are exactly the same statement except this statement, maybe I'll do it in yellow, this statement has a y, this statement has this notation, okay? This is called f of x, that notation. When you read that on paper, that is read as f of x. The notation f of x is another name for y. So this is a different language. It's, it's saying the same thing, it's just this language is called function notation. If a function, if, I'm sorry, if f is a function and x is its domain, then f of x represents the output of f corresponding to the input x. Now you might be thinking, that sounds complicated. Here's all it's telling you. If you have a function and x is in the domain, that means x is one of the, one of the values you can plug into the function, then f of x is what you would get as an output when you plug x in as an input. So you might remember this picture from earlier in the chapter where you have that imaginary computer, you plug a value in for x, the computer will do a calculation and it will give you y. This is the input, this is the output. This last sentence in green is just saying if we talk about function notation, if you input f, x, if you input x, the output would be f of x. So remember, f of x is just another way of saying y. You can use other letters than f to name a function. Like we could name our function instead of f of x, we could name it g of x. Or you could name it h of x. Any of those things still mean y. It's just another language. That language is called function notation. Let's practice evaluating a function. So here they ask us to evaluate f of x equals negative 4x plus 7 when x is 2 and x is negative 2. So when I'm reading that, here's what I'm thinking in my mind. I'm thinking evaluate y equals negative 4x plus 7 when x is 2 and x is negative 2. That's easy. Take 2 for x, plug it in. You can see they're doing that right here. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. So y would be negative 1. Now, this is function notation. So let's make sure that what they put here is making sense. When you see f of 2, that's telling you if you plug in 2 for x, the function works out to negative 1. If you plug in 2 for x, the function works out to negative 1. So on paper, you'll see that written as f of 2 equals negative 1. So in other words, you plugged in 2 for x, and y, the function, works out to negative 1. If you plug in negative 2 for x, you can see that work over here. Negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. So f of negative
negative 2 equals 15. So when you read this on paper, that means you plugged in negative 2 for x, and you're getting the function equaling 15. Well, the function's y. So f of negative 2 would give you 15. Let's talk about interpreting function notation. Let f of t be the outside temperature t hours after 6 a.m., explaining what the meaning of each statement is. So let's look at this. t is the temperature. So this statement here is saying, I misspoke, t is the time, I meant to say, t is the time. If you plug in 0 for t, that means 0 hours after 6 a.m. So this is saying at 6 a.m., the temperature is 58 degrees because zero hours after 6 a.m. would be f of zero. This is saying f of 6 equals n. So what's six hours after 6 a.m.? That's noon. So at noon time, the temperature has to be n degrees is what that's saying. And here, this is saying f of 3, three hours after 6 a.m. That would be 9 a.m. The temperature is less than 9 hours after 6 a.m. And if I'm doing my mental math right, that's 3 p.m. So the temperature at 9 a.m. is less than the temperature at 3 p.m. is what f of 3 is less than f of 9 is telling me. Okay? I want you to pause the video and try these questions. Okay, we're back. So for number one, they wanted you to evaluate the function when x was negative 4, 0, and 3. So if you plug negative 4 in here, f of negative 4 would equal negative 13. This is saying if you plug negative 4 in for x, the function works out to negative 13. If you plug in 0 for x, f of 0 is negative 5. And if you plug in 3 for x, f of 3 is 1. Down here for number 2, I wrote the answers over here. If you plug in negative 4 for x, g of negative 4 would be 3. g of 0 would be negative 1. And g of 3 would equal negative 4. What if, in example 2, let f of t be the outside temperature t hours after 9 a.m., explain the meaning of each statement. So f of 4 equals 75 means 4 hours after 9 a.m. That'd be at 1 p.m. The temperature is 75. So I said at 1 p.m. we have a 75 degree temperature. f of m equals 70 means m hours after 9 a.m. The temperature would be 70. I didn't write that out, but I just spoke it. m hours after 9 a.m. The temperature would be 70. F of 2 equals F of 9 means the following. Two hours after 9 a.m., that's at 11 a.m., the temperature would be the same as nine hours after 9 a.m., which would be 6 p.m. So 11 a.m.'s temperature would equal 6 p.m.'s temperature is what F of 2 equals F of 9 would tell me. And then finally, F of 6 would represent 3 p.m., and that temperature would have to be greater than f of 0, which is 9 a.m. So 3 p.m.'s temperature would be greater than 9 a.m.'s temperature. Hopefully, again, this isn't hard math. It's just knowing what function notation is. Function notation is a language that we have to know. Let's talk about using function notation to solve and graph. Solving for the independent variable. That's some key vocabulary. Independent variable means that's x. Independent variable is x. So this is telling you these directions are saying solve for x. So when you read the directions for h of x equals 2 thirds x minus 5, find the value of x for which h of x is negative 7. So when you see h of x, if you want in your mind, you can just think y. h of x is the exact same thing as y. So in other words, I want to find x when y is negative 7. So take negative 7, plug it in for y, 
and negative 7 would equal 2 thirds x minus 5, and now we just have to onion the problem. Add 5, divide, now I don't agree with the book here, I would be teaching you to divide each side by 2 thirds, and if you divide each side by 2 thirds, you would get x equals negative 3, so that would tell you that h of neg, oops, h, h of negative 3 would give me negative 7. So in other words, if I plug a negative 3 in for x, y has to give me negative 7. That's what that statement's telling me. Let's talk about graphing a linear function in function notation. Okay? You can use your calculator even to help you with these. Now, some of you might be able to just do these off the top of your head pretty easy, but I wanted to show you how to do it on your calculator just in case, so please take your calculator and do the following. Step one, press the Y equals key in the upper left corner of your calculator. Step two, type in 2X plus 5. Now when you do that, I'm doing it as I speak, that's 2, hit the variable key underneath the mode key, plus 5. Now I want to make a table. Now do you notice in the upper right hand corner of your calculator there's a key that says graph? But right above that it says table. If you hit the second button and then graph, you'll see a table created. Now if you look at that table carefully, you'll see it gives you this table. I see on my calculator 0, 5, I see 1, 7, I see 2, 9. I got an arrow up a couple to see negative 2, 1, and negative 1, 3. So you can create the table on your calculator. Now once you create the table, plot the ordered pairs. Now for linear problems, this book showed five ordered pairs. I'd say you at least should get minimum for a linear problem. You should at least get three or four ordered pairs. So I should put graph three or four. That just makes sure we're not making mistakes. Graph three or four points. You can see here they graphed one, two, three, four, five. They took these five and graphed them. And then you draw a line through those points. So this would be the function f of x equals 2x plus 5. Remember, this should give you a straight line graph. It's linear. What I want you to do is pause the video and try numbers 4 and 5 and then try graphing 6, 7, and 8 by using your calculator, typing these in, making a table, and quickly plotting those points. Okay, I'm back. So for problem number 4, you can see my work right here. F of x equals 21, that means y is 21. So you notice I put a 21 in for y, which is f of x, and I'm solving. Take away 9, divide by 6, x is 2. So f of 2 would equal 21. This says that if x is 2, the function would be 21. Y would be 21. Problem 5 g of x is negative 1. That means y is negative 1. My work's up here. So if y is negative 1, I've got to solve for x, take away 3, divide by negative half, x is 8. So that means g of 8 is negative 1. In other words, if I plug an 8 in for x, my y value, g of x would be negative 1. Graph the linear function for number 6. If you put this statement in your calculator, you should get the following table. At least these would be points on the table. You can see I listed some of them here. And now plot those points. So if I take those points and plot them, I should be getting this statement. Here's or this graph. Negative 1, negative 5, 0, negative 2, 1, 1, and 2, 4. There's my line for problem 6 based on those points. Here's number 7. Uh, the table for number 7 is right here, and I plotted those points right there. And then same for number 8. I did number 8 in red just because I was running out of colors. Um, here is the table for number 8. You know, I said 3 or 4 points. I got 3 points here, and then I went ahead and plotted them and drew my line through them. 
to wrap up the video, solving real life problems, the graph shows the number of miles a helicopter is from its destination after X hours on its first flight. So you can see this is the graph. It's saying that uh, it's 300 miles from home and now here in three hours the calculator got home. Or the calculator. The helicopter I meant to say got home. I've got calculator on my mind now. On its second flight the helicopter travels 50 miles farther and increases its speed by 25 miles per hour. The function f of x equals 350 minus 125x represents the second flight where f of x is the number of miles the helicopter is from its destination after x hours. Which flight takes less time? Well, what we need to do is we need to take the function they gave us, I'm circling it here, and we need to graph it and compare this graph to this. So to graph it, that should be easy. You take the function and put it in your calculator using the y equals key and make a table. You notice the book did that. They made a table. I need you to think about this table. These are times and miles. They have to be positive. Since they're positive, all that information has to be in first quadrant. This is where X and Y are all positives. They now plotted those points. You can see 0, 350, and 1, 2 and a quarter, 2, 100, and now 3 negative 25s off my graph because I can't have a negative distance. Okay? Draw a line through the points. You note the function only makes sense where these are positive. That's why they stop here. Now let's compare the two. This flight, it took three hours to get home. This flight, they're traveling, must be traveling faster because you notice it only, it took less than three hours to get home. The time was two point something hours. So that second flight would have been the shorter flight. The second flight would take less time and I answered the question. I think I'm going to pause the video there. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.